Three companies, disrupting what you know about marketing and branding. Welcome to M Squared. Welcome to M Squared. I'm your host, Dan Ryan from the Staten Island Media Group. I'm here with my co-host, Anthony Reptulo from the PR Decision. And not joining us today is Mike Bloomfield from Tech Again. Wah, wah, wah. But our special guest is uh, Charlie Quinn from Charlie Quinn MMA. How's it going, guys? Thanks Happy for coming in. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming. We got so, uh, a lot to dig into there, but we're going we're gonna to do a rant today. Before. Okay. It's been so, a while. It's been a while. So, Charlie, we do what's called a raps rant. It's where no. usually I just yell about Today's something. Raps but rant. we'll see today what we could pull out, what's a little raps apropos. Rant. I think we're going to go with the most recent event that our Bears fan in the room doesn't care about. But we had the, the recent failure of the Jets with Aaron Rodgers going down in four plays. From a marketing standpoint, they built up so much excitement. They built up so much revenue, right? Revenue in, in merchandise. All these things that they did. And within, I don't even know how long was it. I mean, how long were the four plays? Four minutes? Was it not even, even. not even four minutes. Within three minutes, it was like everything just left that that stadium. But that's their brand. That's the Jets. That's right? not nice to say, I'm though. I'm telling you, they, they build up these ebbs and flows of emotion. And then all of a sudden, it's like the air leaves the room. Okay, but from a marketing and branding standpoint, what do you think it does for their brand now? All these guys who bought Rogers jerseys, all these all these fans who bought season tickets only to see him, right? Let's call it what it is. Yeah, he's you probably QB. got people. He's still he's he's still their guy. He's the he's the highest paid quarterback coach in the league right now. That's what he is. He's not a quarterback anymore. You don't think he's going to come back? Aren't they saying he's out for good? Not for You're a sports guy. I think he comes back. You think he comes back? I think he he's going to take it a little personal. Has to come back. I would say he has to come back too. But it's a lot harder to come back at forty from, you know, from an Achilles thing than it is when you're twenty. Agreed. But, but you saw the play, right? Every even if you didn't watch the game, you saw the play. I mean, my son could take a better hit. You, you I don't know, man. If you watch that in slow motion, you see the guy, you see the calf just like turn into a ball. You know, you're old. That's why. I know. I feel. I feel I like I, I feel worse than he does. He had a back operation. He's a mess. This guy. It yeah. an operation. Tens. I tens. I herniated, units. herniated three discs. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't even think the Jets are going to panic. I don't think – I mean, obviously, you lose someone like Rodgers, it's it's really tough, but that defense is legit as it gets. I mean, carried them the other night to a win. As long as you know, Zach Wilson doesn't turn the ball over, you know, I think they'll be all right. They still make the playoffs. All right, so let's hear it here first before we get into the interview. Long-term projection for the branding and marketing of the Jets. Is it more or less marketable with or without Rodgers? I think, I mean, it's still in, still in New York. I mean – they really weren't marketed as a great team. They were marketed around Rodgers, and I get that. But, you know, I think they're just going to shift focus to the defense, and they're going to promote how great Sauce Gardner is and how great, you know, the rest of the team is. And they're going to move with that. And that's that's really all you right. can do. I think that's, that's right. A great run game, and, you know, you old-school smash-mouth football. That's really it. That's all you could do. Right. So, well, transitioning from the rant over to sports, uh, Charlie, you're, you're, you're known for Charlie – Quinn MMA, but you really, you cover a variety of different sports and work in, in the, the total industry. It's not just yeah. that niche, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to tell us a little bit about what you are and, and everything that you get involved with? Everybody knows the MMA is really the big thing I cover. Um, on top of that, we have a men's flag football league, me and my partner, uh, Mike Fidanza, you know, his pops has been doing 9-11 uh, flag football for a long time, kind of handed the keys over to Mike Jr. And you know, where the men's league is now TFL, the flag league. You can find us on Instagram at the flag league underscore. Um, we went from about 22 teams to, I think, 57 in the second season. Third season, looking to start October 7th. You know, should have about 75 teams. And, you know, that's been great. Um, you're in a, you're, that's the adult league, right? Yeah, that's the men's, strictly the men's. You know, the kids still going on, 9-11 kids is still, uh, you know, out thriving. Dan's up for the coach of the year award for the kids. We got our first so game. I've been told. You know, we got our first game on, on Saturday. I got into to work in sports media when I was about 18, 19 at Sports Illustrated. I was, you know, the youngest in the company at the time. I looked down on, you know, while I was there. You know, people really didn't think I, I deserved to be there at the time, it felt like. Um, but I was there for a couple of years, and then the pandemic hit. Social media was kind of an afterthought. You know, I was thinking of, you know, work in construction or something like that, and stuff just fell into place. You know, social media took a rise once the pandemic hit. You know, with TikTok and everything, you know, people trapped in their houses, you know, more people on their phones kind of took a rise and you know I got into MMA because MMA seemed like a you know a dead market for media and the easiest route in not to lie you know I'm not going to BS you but then I got into that and kind of just started taking off making videos doing interviews you know now doing a little bit of commentating and broadcasting and it's, it's really taken off from here so before we go 
further into it, what I was telling Dan outside earlier is that the most interesting thing about him as a guest is that we've had lots of guests who are influencers, hundreds of thousands of followers, all kinds of content creators. But to my knowledge, and Dan will correct me if I'm wrong, we've never had someone like you who looked at social media differently. And yeah. I don't want to say backwards, but that's kind of the word I want to use. Yeah. You looked at social media as a tool to create a business, whereas a lot of influencers are simply funny, uh, overwhelmingly attractive, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And then eventually they get to a point where they're like, oh, I got 100,000 followers. I didn't know I could make money. You said, let me see how I can make money off social media and pick a niche. So talk about, I mean, that whole strategy is unique, at least to everyone in this room. So so what made you look at it that way as opposed to the way the traditional influencer or traditional uh, social media person looks at it? So, I mean, I, I definitely credit my time at Sports Illustrated. I really learned what media was and what I learned you know, right off the bat was people don't care. You know, Nobody cares. That's my favorite line. Yeah. Does Nobody cares about anything. Everybody Next to my wife, she'll tell you. Nobody cares. Everybody in the media industry is kind of doing the same thing. Look at Dan Ryan. He's doing the same thing. You kind of just have to try to stick out you know, in, in a way but still be professional. So I took the route of while I was at Sports Illustrated building a social account called New York Sportscast. Um, I was writing a little bit for uh, Sports Blog New York at the time. Okay. The local uh, thing. Um Made that, and my goal was to you know cover Staten Island sports, and I was looking to be the you know the first guy to you know broadcast Staten Island sports, bring that back a little bit. Um, I know it was on like Time Warner Cable back in the days, but now I think uh, nobody cares sports does, yeah. does that. He's doing um, a good job. But yeah, that was one of the goals, and you know I was covering New York sports predominantly, and then you know the the island sports. You know a couple guys who got drafted uh, to the MLB. You know I played played with them, so I was you know promoting their stuff, interviewing them, and then. You know, I dove right into the, you know, the MMA stuff. But now not to interrupt you, I want to stop you there. You made an important point before when we were having a conversation. So yep. he had a huge account. What was the name of the first account you had? NY Sportscast, New York Sportscast. New York Sportscast. Okay. And then you got to walk me through this because I don't know the answer. But what happened with that account? You said Instagram shut you down. And, oh, like, no. What so was that, the repercussions? That was, that was the old brand on, tw on Twitter. My previous Instagram that you were uh, speaking of is Charlie Quinn MMA. Okay. Um, Instagram uh, shut me down. Took why? Me down. I had, right. That's uh, why I want to hear. Close to, I think it was like 28,000, 29,000 followers. I was doing like 10 million clicks a week. Like Isn't ridiculous numbers. Want? Right. That's why like, I want to hear. Yeah, ridiculous numbers. Uh, I think I, it was a little bit of a copywriting issue. You know, I was posting some videos from the UFC that wasn't really like. Kind of go back at people in the comments. And you know, if people had a negative opinion, I'd give them a negative opinion right back. And, you know, they report your thing and, you know, you kind of, you know, second guy. So what does that look like for us? Second guy always gets called. For us regular know? folks who don't have millions of followers and fans, like what does that look like? It just, uh, they send you like an alert that says, hey, sucks to be you. You're canceled. So, Do they call you? Like, how does that work? So uh, the original complaint was I posted a, a video of this guy, Jake Paul, who was a pretty huge, yeah, huge, of course. Yeah. huge influencer. So I was uh, invited out to his fight week, you know, to go out and cover it. I right. didn't wind up going, you know, a lot of people get invited. It's not like I was special or anything. But I didn't go, and I wound up posting. You have to discredit yourself. He <laughs> so I wasn't invited. Just saying. He he lost the fight, and I posted his interview in the in the ring right after the fight, and it was like him like making an excuse. So I posted it, said said what I said, right. and I looked back at my phone like an hour and a half later. It had like three hundred fifty thousand views. This was your recording. I just took it off of. I got it on Twitter or something. Okay. It was from the event. You know, I thought I had credentials to the event. I was fine. You know. If you have the credentials to be at the event, why wouldn't you have credentials, you know, post the stuff from the event? They would want more eyes on the brand, I would think. So I posted that, and I guess he was a little pissed off that, you know, I posted him in a negative way, <laughs> and it had 350,000 views in, like, the first hour and a half. And when I went to bed and I woke up, it had, like, 4 million views. And Jesus. Then now, had, at that point, were you, were you monetized? Were you getting yeah, paid? Yeah, I was getting paid. So, like, per the view, I was... So what does that look like? What, do you, what, is, what does a view count like that translate into dollars? Um, I mean... To put it into perspective, it's not really great money. Um, I think it's you get you could only get paid if you make a hundred dollars minimum, but okay. you get a hundred dollars at I think like five hundred thousand views. Um, okay. But the most I ever made was like a little bit under a thousand dollars, which is not but for sitting at home just, you know, yeah. posting videos, it's pretty crazy. It doesn't right. really, you know, make sense. It's so, the guys like us who aren't making any money. You know, right? it, it's, no, no one's paying me to do it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But <laughs> no one's paying me um, for nothing. Yeah, def definitely it's it's not as all as kicked out to be, but it's a grind. So they so they canceled. You got the alert that said, "Hey, you did this thing with." No, so I got that alert on that Jake Paul video. I got emailed right okay. away, and it was you know you could appeal it. So I appealed it, and you know I lost. Then Jake Paul went on whoever on his team. They went and they got, found another video from like months back, like where, like from his previous fight, which was a positive video. So I don't know why they did that. 
took that one down. Now I had two strikes. You know, the three strikes, you're out rule kind of applies right. to everything in life. Posted a video of a UFC knockout, and I probably beat the UFC to posting the video on Instagram. I right. got it off of Twitter, and I collaborated with the fighter on Instagram, and they wound up accepting it. I, didn't, I just sent it. I didn't think they were going to accept it. It was on their page. Someone from the UFC saw it. Instantly got a notification on Instagram. Couldn't get into my account. I was locked out. I was like, all right, this is weird. Got into the account. Then I look at my email, and I had 15 copyright infringes. They went through my whole Instagram and took every single video I ever posted of like a UFC fight, which I thought was very weird. It was from Zufa, it was from ESPN. I thought it was very strange. I guess when you have a big following, they kind of try to take you down. I thought that they would want you promoting their brand. What That's else true. are you supposed to do with the videos besides share them? I don't really know. So you're definitely like social media's most wanted that's been in this room. I could so, say that. I mean, I've been- Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I've been banned from TikTok three different times for the same type Why? of stuff. What so. is the, what happened there? It's just copyright. You know, they don't, I don't, I don't, I personally don't understand why you can't share videos of stuff that happens on television. But I isn't mean, everything, 90% of what you're watching and scrolling, isn't it all? Especially if you're not profiting off of it, like TikTok and that stuff. I'm not, I don't accept the monetization. Like right now on Instagram, I don't accept it on my new account. I don't think it's worth it. You have more eyes on you to, you know, get stripped down and copyrighted if you're getting paid for it. You piss a lot of people off. So they, so they did at some point shut that account down. Is that yeah, correct? that account got shut down and there was no... No going even, back. So since they hit me with about 15 in about two minutes, right. it made it like, you know, you had all these warnings and yeah. you could really figure it out, but I really didn't. Right. They did it on purpose that yeah. way. So there was no... I When I called through Instagram, I mean, I made phone call after phone call. The only possible way I had to get it back was this UFC fighter, Darren, Darren Till. He was pretty big to you know, say for to a you while. to say it was okay. So no, not to say it was okay. So th he's a little bit of a you know what, a little okay. Bit of, and he's pretty crazy on Instagram, Twitter. He's been stripped down because he's said some outlandish right. things. And he had a guy who I had to pay like thirty five hundred dollars to get my account back, and I eventually decided it wasn't worth it, and just built a new one. Wow. So that was so where you at now? Right now I'm at about fifteen thousand on Instagram. What's um, the handle? Charlie Quinn Media. Um, I just, you know, I roll with the same thing. Just got rid of the MMA. I don't post UFC videos anymore. I learned a lesson. I will not copyright. I don't do that, but it was kind of a blessing. Um, now I'm at 15,000, but I have more of an engaged audience. I have more of a, you know, purpose. It was kind of a wake up call because now I make my own content. I make videos. I make, you know, picture like my best, my biggest thing on Instagram is uh hardest fight picks. That's, okay. You know, I take the greatest pictures I've seen on Instagram, or the greatest pictures I've seen from the UFC or from, you know, fights from previous years and make a little montage. And then, you know, I, I do interviews with fighters. My previous one was with this guy, Dan Ige. He fights next weekend as the co-main event in the UFC That's cool. fight. And now these guys are reaching out to you, right? So you're um, like... When it comes to the fighters, I reach out to them. Okay. I reach out. I don't... A lot of guys reach out to their management and that stuff. Right. I kind of have just access to going to any gym in the world, pretty much. I just, you know, I have... So talk about that. So, so how'd you go from being banned... To like so I um kicked I go out to, of the world of Instagram and now so you're being my, invited. My nine to five job, I do a lot of traveling. So I do um, social media for an exhibitory company. So I go to you know trade shows and stuff like that. So anytime I'm in a state that isn't New York, I'm looking for a gym that's within you know an hour reach of wherever I am. Right. So I could you know if I'm going to for example, I go to Vegas a lot for work. So. A lot of people think, you know, Vegas going out partying. I'm going to go to, not to sound corny, but I'm going to go to the gym. You know, the two gyms that I have out there. And right. Go get interviews, you know, and stuff like when, when work's done. And I have that access out there. You know, Extreme Couture MMA kind of very, very, they treat you like a family over there. You know, they're very, like, I don't know, right, the homie as like a. Right. But this is where the grind picks up. You were talking yeah, about so how this could be really something that's. That's time consuming and kind of Yeah, so then you go you all go, encompassing. So a normal day at a gym to get interviews is not what you would think it is. You would think you know you just walk right in, you how's it going? You, you do an interview. Now you walk right in, if they're training, you gotta wait till they're done training. Then you know, I've had a wait there with USADA. USADA is the uh, anti doping testing agency. Okay. Um so you gotta wait till they go to the bathroom and do all that stuff and then they come out and then, you know, they're all pissed off because they had to deal with USADA for however long and then Next thing you know, you're there for two and a half hours for one guy, and then <laughs> then you got to get to the next guy. Right. It's like you know, it's really time consuming. But then you do the interview, and then if you don't have a camera guy with you, you got to have the interview with the mics. You got to have it all set up. And then you got to cut it. And you know, I cut all my own stuff. I don't have anybody involved with me at the moment. I right. just just do everything on my own as far as content and video. And I usually use an iPhone. I have a, a pro camera, but I like the iPhone a lot better. So now people could find these interviews on your social handles. Yeah, they get pr predominantly on Instagram. So um, if you go on my Instagram, you'll see a link tree, which has links to everything, including my LinkedIn page, literally every, right. every possible link. 
What's been your two questions? What's been the worst interview? What's what's your best? What do you want worst people to go interview. see? My worst interview, I don't really want to throw him, throw a guy under the bus. Um, we'll probably blurt it out. Tough interview. Anytime you ask him a question that it's supposed to be a rollover question. I'm big into asking rollover questions. Um, wouldn't roll over. Wouldn't you know extend the question. It would just kind of be like a yep. Yeah. And then just wait for me to say something. And it was not very fun. You know, a lot well, of let the, me let me stop you for one second because we're we're we're, re- we're already like at the 50 yard line. Yeah. I want, like, how did you, first of all, why would anyone let you into the gym? How do you, how did you get, like, how did you become the guy that people or MMA fighters want to even speak to? I think That's, it's, I mean, at first it was a numbers thing. I think, you know, when you have a big following, they kind of just look at it like, oh, like there's gotta be something to him. You know, he's sure. got okay. big numbers. I get it. I agree with that. If you got numbers and you're going to post me, you know, we're going to get numbers together. Right. Essentially it's kind of like, you know, more. No, that makes sense. So, but for me, like I said earlier, you know, MMA, I thought was a dead media. There was, these these fighters don't really understand what social media is. They're so consumed with with fight training is as terrible there's, as it gets. Like there's a per, like a perception of what. It yeah, is. it's as time consuming as it gets. It's not like you know you go to football practice. You know, like Joe Burrow goes and he throws. He comes out. And he talks to the media. You go right. and fight. You don't. Right. That's it. It's done. It's it. It's a mis- it's a miserable life. Honestly, like it's not. You get punched in the face all day and <laughs> literally multiple times. You're doing two a days. It's like being married. Are you married? No, oh. anybody who's who's um, different kind of punch. Yeah, <laughs> anybody who's um, like a pro fighter is really in the gym three hours in the morning, three hours in the night, or you know a couple hours during the day. It's it's really like you know you, you get your eight hours at work, you're gonna go get your eight hours training, and that mentally alone, on top of the physicality damage you do, is miserable. The content you create is exceptional. We know that. So so Appreciate it's because that. it's because you had the access, and then because. They wanted to do that collab because they wanted to boost everybody's numbers, but then your content actually backed up yes, what so it was. I've also I learned from the team at Sports Illustrated how to really reach out to people. Um, I watched, you know, the department I was in, you know, had some people who reached out to guests and stuff like that to get right. them to come in, you know, for reference. I watched someone email like JJ Reddick to come into the office. So I kind of have an idea on how to write an email. So I just, right. you know, changed up into a DM. Except now the email became the DM. Yeah. So I, I sent it through there. And, you know, if they don't answer, sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, I'll time it up when they post. And then they're looking at their phone. I'll right. I'll put on their, I'll put on their you know, post, like, check DM or something like that. Most of the time, like, nine out of eight out of ten times, they'll, they'll check it. And if they're around, they'll do it. I don't like doing podcasting anymore. Like, this is the first podcast I've done in, I probably couldn't tell you how long. Definitely really? longer than a year. I don't do my own personal podcast. I just think I'm boring. It's <laughs> as crazy as it sounds. I don't think I'm a 30-minute watch. So that's why I do the interviews. And I, I get about, for Instagram, I'll cut it into about three to five minutes of you know really good content. Right. But the interview itself for me is 10 minutes max. And that's all I should have for you. You know, I'm looking to get a quick eye. You know, the first thing that you see is the most important. We were talking about this the other day. Mike, who's not here, right? The punchline. Give yeah, the punchline first. Give the punchline first. Yeah, first thing, that's it. first thing you see on social media is the most important thing by yeah. far. First 30 seconds will tell you if you're going to stay or leave on the video. And you don't want to drag it out. You don't want to have too long of a video because no one has the attention span. Right, no one cares. That's why they're on social media. To begin with. Yeah. yeah, that's just how it is. It's not disregarding anybody. It's not me saying I'm smarter than people. It's just how it is. So do you go, you go to the athletes direct? Through that, or for do the you, most part, yeah, like I don't publicists really deal, or people that I don't deal with the managers for the most part. I don't. I know a couple. I don't really deal with them. A good thing with me now is, I mean, I've I've started training it. So when you're in the gym and you're doing it, you're they have a little bit more of a respect. Not that I'm a fighter, like they don't look at me as a fighter, but I'll go in and I'll train sometimes at these gyms, and you know they'll teach you stuff, so they have no problem, you know, interviewing and you know they Probably. see that you're not a BS artist. You know, people go in there and they just go in there for the clout. It probably makes you communicate better. Right? Yeah, that, 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 that too. You could relate to what they're doing. Yeah. yeah, so a couple, you know, I train with a couple guys in New York who, who have been, been pro fighters, so it's pretty cool. You know, they're, they're, they're people persons, you know, pe- people people, right. you know, I should say, but they're not as out there, like, because there's no ESPN for, there's ESPN for MMA and stuff like that, but it's, you've never really got a non-McGregor update on your phone that's like, oh, breaking news. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. You you're can't right. say you got a push, right. push notification like that because it doesn't exist. So I've, I've been trying to build an app for it for the longest time. I'm just not, you know, that's interesting. adept for it. I'm not, you know, I guess talented enough to build the app. But I think an M, like an MMA, a combat sports app like that would be, you know, perfect. Interviewing them has is, is really become seamless now. Now that I've been doing it for a while, I, uh, you know, I've, I've been commentating a bit too. I have another, I'm making an announcement on that too. I'm uh, making my commentating return to the desk um be commentating at flex fight series uh 28 
October 21st. In, that's cool. In uh, Queens, New York. Cool. Um, prof- the only professional uh, MMA in New York. You know, that's how do people tune into that? Uh, that they'll Flex will put out a, a thing on their website on Flex Fight Series. You can only find them on Instagram at, at Flex Fight Series. So even to that, you, you could only see it where they distribute right. it, right? That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, they, so have, they have a YouTube page. Um, so I'll be ringside, but I'll also be the guy. Like, So you watch the fight online, you hear me. Oh, wow. So there's lead play-by-play, that's me, and then you have my two guys on, on board with me. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Now, so you didn't go to school for this, you said, right? No, I mean, you fell into? I've gone to broadcasting school for it, but I didn't go, if that makes any sense. I went to the school, enrolled in the school, and the first day of the school, I was like, nah, I don't need this. <laughs> and I, that was that. Well, now you do make, it, make now, a living out of it. That was and it. And then it. just so happened, the pandemic hit, like, right as that hit. Okay. So, it was like and that's you when I left did sports, your work and you said this is going to work for me. When I left Sports Illustrated, that the plan was to go to broadcasting school, and I just knew it was a waste of time. So, so where you, do you see MMA like going? Like, do you th- do you think that as the like the premier fighting I think it's feature? A, it this I got on board at the right time. You know, it's, it's just, if you haven't got on board, you still can get on board because I'm not to compete with myself, but there's no one out there in New York who's doing it like I'm doing it in Staten Island at least. I haven't seen any content creators who are. Even really covering MMA, it's not. Right. Really, there's like maybe one or two, and the effort isn't there. I mean, the effort has to be there, unless it's a waste of time. Right. It's not even a matter of. Listen, if, even if I had the followers or whatever, you know, if you're not posting, you know, a couple times a week or a couple times a day, you're you're wasting your time. Hundred percent. If you're not, you know, if in your mind you're not the number one, you got to be the number one outlet for yourself before you can be the number one outlet for anyone else's. Right. Because everybody's their sound. own media company now. So go back to that though, the frequency. It's it's for me right now. I've slowed down on the frequency a little bit because I'm at the point where the quality should be better than the quantity. Like when you're building yourself up, I think you know pushing out content that's really good is the main you know main focus. But when you're at a certain point, I think that people want to see certain stuff and right because they've been following you for so long, right? Unless they're, they're unless expecting you're it to get better. That, you know, you're not really you know they're not really satisfied or pleased. I guess. And now he keeps talking about Instagram, so I want to go back to that. Instagram so, is the number one spot in the world. Not TikTok. So it's, it's interesting because I feel like well, it depends 90% what you're for. of the people so for me we speak to are all TikTok fanatics. It's that, but they've all done it on Instagram. They and like, then transitioned. They're liking playing around with TikTok, but yeah. it doesn't make them money like Instagram. It doesn't do their thing for them. True. Yeah. For me, a big thing is you look at TikTok, what's, who's the number one audience for TikTok? You want to say kids, but it's not. It's it's not, but it is. No, but it's not really. If you look at the demographics, it's it's us. But you would know better. What give me the demographics? My wife. Okay, and she's how old? She's forty. Right, and a mom. I feel like it's switched. No, that's. I mean, that's fair. That's a fair take. I mean, if you have the facts too, it's fair. Well, I don't know if they're facts. I yeah, just. You know, no, I'm he's so the media guru. There's it's two. It's there's two factions of it. It's like the people in the middle. Right. It's kids. Cut out the people in the right. middle. And then put the like we know Facebook is old. We all know the thirty-five year old up mom and everybody else that's looking out there for like funny stuff. And yeah. it's to it's to waste time, right? Right. Yeah. It's the attention thing. So I I personally think that when it comes to the ages zero to not zero, but well, no, ages yeah. two to you know fourteen or fifteen. You think that's the main audience? I think if that's an audience on TikTok, it's not my audience. Yeah, no, no, you're definitely interested in that. I get so, you. Instagram is the number one spot for me always, you know, and I, I strategize on times I post. I post at certain times that I think that people are going to be leaving work or, you know, checking their phone at lunch or, you know, waking up. And do you use any tools to help you? I'm big into 11 a.m. A little before 11 a.m. is when I would post. So I would post at 11 because that's when the average guy in the Eastern time, you know, if they take a break or if they just look at their phone. And then that's when, you know, the average you know guy on the West Coast is getting to work and already in work for an hour and just looking at their phone. You know, when you first thing you get to work is you, know, you check your phone real quick and you put it down. Right. You know, that's, no, you're right. Human nature. I then, agree. You know, I'm big into 7 p.m. is the best time. 10 p.m. 10 p.m. After is dinner be- before bed. 10, 10, 30, 11 o'clock p.m. is the best time to right. post ever on social media because you get people who are going to sleep or people, who, active are, audience. You know, people right. who are active. Most people who are active on social media are active between 11 and midnight. Like that's people who are... You know, they're not tired or they're right. trying to fall asleep or they can't well, they fall asleep. Well, they can fall asleep. They're just scrolling, they're just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And, you know, they're debating. That's where, like, that's where I, I make it on Twitter. Like, Twitter is, is easy money for me. It's 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 all fun and games. It's So what's your Twitter following? Only about 6,000. But I've done, last month I did 4 million views and engagements. Um, it's a lot of, not trolling, but a lot of trolling. Like, a lot of, yeah. like, 
do a lot of replying to it. Commenting on other stuff. That, yeah, that, you it's, know. It's still. I that's start, how it works. I speak the obvious. Yeah. And I'm big into right now, which isn't even MMA, but I'm big into defending Deion Sanders. I think that defending. what he's <laughs> okay. what he's doing is incredible, and it just needs to be spoken about. They were they had Talk one win. It. They had one win last year, and he's got two wins there now, and people, you know, they're scolding him for how he, you know, how he's acting, but he's, in my eyes, he's always acted the same way. Right, never changed. So what's different? What's changed besides the, you know, the the platform he has? How could you not respect a guy who's backed up every little, everything he's ever said? And he's, in my eyes, he's a top three athlete to ever walk the earth. You know, he played prof- played professional baseball and professional football in the same week. Right. right. You know, at high levels, in playoff environments. Like, then he's a coach who's going to go win bowl games and, you know, the yep. D1 AA level, and the FCS level, and then he's going to go take a one-win program to a two-win program in two games. I mean, yeah, when everyone was writing him off, he's going to have something <laughs> to say. That's But that's a great place to be you in that middle of that contest. Yeah, because that's, right. that's where you're that's digging. That's Neon Dion, man. That's, that's, you, know, that's, that's, you know, that's why he's one of the, the best. And So um, what are, outside of the times, which are good, so give me the times again, best times to post. Uh, I'm big into right around, you know, 11 a.m., 10.30 a.m. And then you're saying late thing, night. 11 p.m., 10.30 p.m. All right, so that's good for listeners and people watching. What are some tools or tips you can give? So you already said that that you're married to, I shouldn't say married to, but you prefer Instagram as your social media of choice because Instagram you think that's where you do the one. best. Yeah. What are some tips that you can give to people watching or listening who are thinking of starting a brand, have a brand? What what could you tell them that you've learned throughout your journey of being an influencer that, that really was like an aha moment or something where you're like, it clicked, and you're like, now I got it? Just kind of be yourself. Just, you know, don't really, don't think of it. Don't make it into more than what it is. Um, at the end of the day, you're an inf- like, if you're an influencer, you're an influencer. Like, you're not, you're not a pro athlete. Like, don't act like a pro athlete. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't act like you own the room wherever you walk in. Like, you know, it was pretty cool for me the first time I really, like, understood that I had, like, a decent following was, like, I don't, like, no one is that. I don't get right into when people are like, oh, my God, there's a right, right, right. guy. Like, I'm not, like, famous or anything like that by any means. It's pretty funny if you go to a bar or something like that and you run into and a couple people somebody. who they know someone you know and, you know, they say a couple Everybody things. Everybody knows him as Dan on the street. You ever hear of a, of a show called Dan on the street? <laughs> Grace Foundation. They all say, Dan, Dan, what are you doing? You're Dan on the street. That happens. <laughs> but, it happens. Uh, it's a weird thing. I know. As, as far as advice for people, uh, I would just say be consistent. If you're not consistent, it's you're wasting your time. It's if you're not posting multiple times a day. If you're a social, if you're a social media guy, or you think you're a social media guy or girl, you got to be posting two, three times a day. If, if you're new, if you're there already and you're established, you do it how you want it because you got you it got to, it already. You got it to the point where it was. You know, you make those decisions. But advice for an early upcoming social media guy or girl, I mean, you got to just grind. You got to post multiple times. And you don't you use be authentic. tools. You said before, no tools. I mean, I, as far I was, as like an auto posting system or a, no, or like that. a repurpose IO, or, I, nope. how about any AI tools? Nope. Mike is not here. Our other co-host, he would be talking right now about chat GPT, all these AI I mean, things. It would be I himself could, first, then right. chat GPT. Right. That's correct. I how great he even, is, Mike, because he's great. Couldn't even tell you what that was. Really? I've okay. seen it on Twitter. I just never even, never used it, never looked it up. Don't care for it. Just not me. I don't, AI is not me. I've been told from a couple of people that I need to use AI. The only app I'll use is InShot. I like InShot. Every once in a while, I'll use CapCut just for one feature. I don't need it for anything else, just for one thing. I need a, you know, I cut but Now, out. I've used InShot. InShot is so much more difficult to use compared to CapCut. You know, um, CapCut's just like... I think with the difficulty comes a better product. I don't opinion. disagree. Right. So now that I'm into it, I used it for years when like, I used it for free, and then, then I bought like the, the over-the-top yeah, yeah, yeah. package, and it became easier. They it's, like, it's like everything else. Once you get used to it, yeah, you know, and then but, it becomes your workflow. I, I think InShot's the best. That's mine. Then I use like Photo Room for I cut the background out of pictures and stuff like that, and then add it to you know videos and stuff like that. But I just really started elevating my my editing game for interviews. I used to just interview you and just post it. Now you'll have captions in it. You'll have pictures that'll pop up mid interview and stuff like that. But that's that's the trend, right? You need that. Yeah, you got to stay on things. on brand. With, with what's what's what working for other people? You know, I, I've always said that it's always been a big thing. Like for. For years, like people have done it, you know. I've always thought man on the street interviews are the best. That those are always. I like them. Yeah, I always like. I think they're always the most exciting. Just you got to have, you know, excuse my language, you know, a pair of balls to do it. You got to really, you know, have some guts to really, you know, go out there and do it. It's not as easy as you think. Like, I've thought I've I'd be lying if I said I haven't, you know, planned to do it and then backed off of it. You know, I planned to do that for the the New York Giants um, when they drafted Daniel Jones. I was at the draft show, at the draft at the at MetLife, and I planned on doing one of those things, and I just. I didn't have it in me. You like that? You know, the lights went on for a second, and I just I couldn't do it. It was for some reason I have no idea why, but 
Well, it's weird, right? You're walking up to people like, hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah, and then, you know, I, I tried it when people, you know, after we drafted Jones because I realized the magnitude of it and how crazy it was. And yep. people were just really pissed off and had no interest in talking to me. So I was <laughs> like, okay, yeah. And then, what, are the, what do the next six months have for you as a content creator and as a brand? Um, I mean, I'd say definitely endorsements. Um, not like Nike and stuff like that. You're going to put like, I, the tattoo on your back? When I, when I was um, at my old, you know, my, about 28,000 on Instagram or whatever, the, they started coming in. You know, I had about four or five different uh, ambassadorships where I made some decent money from. Which, right. You know, it's not all about the money. It's about the brand too. But, you know, once I lost that following, they all disappeared. Which of course. I get it. Yeah. But don't come back around, you know. Right. We're going to, you know, we're going to move on. Um, definitely some apparel. That's uh, that's a big that thing. That makes sense. Um, TFL. TFL is a main focus of Flag League, like we spoke about earlier. Flag sure. football and men's flag football, making sure that it's here to stay. On Staten Island, I know it's been uh, juggled around a couple leagues for a year. You know, a couple years now, there's been a couple different leagues. But, you know, we're really here to make sure that that's the number one league on Staten Island. You know, I credit my partner, Mike, you know, working our asses off to do everything we can to provide the best product for men's league flag football. And big part of who I am, you know, the flag football in the men's league and Making sure everybody, it's like, it's a culture. It's like, right. you know, it's like a big, it's like we, we compare it to like playing Little League. When you would hang out, you would play, you know, throw the handball off the wall. People hang out all day. Yep. People go to the football league and, you know, they have their chairs out and they're hanging out for four, five, six hours. Right. They're watching basketball games, watching football games, they're on their phone. Like the championship games have like 100 people at them, 150 people at them. Right. For men's league, it's, yeah. it's hilarious. Right. You know, it doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> but, you know, there's, Something to do. there's, yeah, been, <laughs> there's been a lot of leagues in, in Staten Island for men's. You know, flag football predominantly for a couple of years, but you know we're we're really here to make sure that we're the one that you go to. That. So we're gonna capture this: the guy who pissed off Jake Paul. That'll be, <laughs> and we'll tag him in it and see if he gets pissed at us but, when yeah, we put it up. But that, with that being said, um, with MMA, there's a lot, there's a lot coming up. There's a lot of different things, you know, on, on the table. And, you know, a lot of different conversations I've had lately. Um, like October 21st, like we said, gonna be back in the booth, flex fight series. You know lead commentator that's that that was always a goal of mine as a kid to you know be a commentator growing up and you said I've, that's in queens right yeah so I've, I've always wanted to be a commentator i've always wanted to work for either tnt or you know msg msg the garden is my favorite place right. In, right. in the world like working for uh, i worked for pfl last week uh, or two weeks ago for their playoffs and uh you know, when you walk through the tunnel as like you know a worker, so yeah. to say, yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Like it, it, it's a little chilling, and you know, it's you take a step for a second, and you really think like, wow, like you know, this yeah, is I'm really pretty here. cool. You know, even though it's feel as important, it's still pretty cool. You know, you don't, right. you know, you're not. People look at it like, oh, you're just a you know media guy or whatever, but it's 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 nice to take. Well, also, you're still on the field. They're not. So yeah, it's, the it's, it's nice That's to right. take them all. Right at the end of the day, they watch from home or whatever they're doing. They're not. They're not there. Yeah, next to the players, next to the coaches, and on the field. For sure. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things on the table. You know, people have been asking me to get into the boxing ring, which is uh, a okay. little different. The money's there. You know, I, w I wouldn't be opposed to it if it's a nice paycheck. Um, now you're talking about, like, like I don't, I don't know. They like call it parody influencer boxing, boxing, influencer yeah, boxing. They call okay. influencer boxing. I'm not a real professional fighter. If someone wants to throw me a bag of cash. Me too. Be, Let me know when they throw the cash at you. I'll fight you. wouldn't be opposed to it, you know. Listen, we'll do it right <laughs> but, here. But I'm not going to be going out of my way seeking that. If, <laughs> no. if somebody wants, if you know, there's been a couple people who have reached out That's recently funny. and said, hey, like, would you do this and this for this? And I said, I mean, maybe. And they're like, yeah. all right, can you get to this weight? And I said, all right, no, that's, right. you got to up the price a little bit if I got to do that's, that. So yeah. there's, a, there's a couple different, you know, things and talks there. Um, on top of the commentating, I'm going to be uh, hosting a UFC watch party for the uh, UFC 295 card, which is that in, makes New sense. It's in New York. It's at the Garden. Prices are outrageous. It's for John Jones' retirement fight. Okay. It's not going to be listed on the ticket. It's his retirement fight. I'm telling you it's his retirement fight. I'm pr promising you it's his retirement fight. Heard it here first. Exclusive. Most mm -hmm. expensive seat in the Garden. Take a guess. I don't even want to know. What? Tell me. And, $113,000. Get the hell out of here. Most expensive sporting event. In That's insane. Probably besides the Super Bowl ever. Really? That's insane. Over $110,000. It was on ESPN this morning. That's wild. Crazy. And are they selling it out? Like it's they're it's the garden. Right. They have to. They will. I'm just they saying. Will. But what jerk pays that? Yeah. But <laughs> the feeling won't be the same. It it like I, I mean I'm I go to about probably twelve Knicks games a year. I'm a huge diehard Knicks fan. Okay. You could tell when it's a corporate night and you could tell when it's a it's Yeah, of course. The boys are in the right. building. You, yeah. you could tell, you know, like gonna be I, I don't know if it's gonna have that same feel. It deserves to. John Jones is the greatest mixed martial artist ever. There's no debate. Like there's not the number two, the drop off from him and whoever's at two is 
ridiculous. Like, he's from New York. How could you not pack the place out? How could it not be priced how it is? I get yeah. it, but save a couple, you know? Yeah. Save, you know, give a couple away. So what's your watch party going to be? Watch party is going to be November 11th at O'Neill's. Um, Mike Reagan owns O'Neill's. Uh, he plays in the football league. You know, he was happy enough to extend the opportunity to me. And my, my partner, Mike, is actually going to be hosting it with me. Cool. Um, so, you know, we're going to have a couple uh, different possible UFC, PFL fighters in attendance. We're going to come and greet some fans, do some content, um, you know, watch the fights, you know, from... About eight to one, you know. I'm sure there'll be a deal on alcohol and stuff like that. Um, DJ, you know, we're nice. gonna make that. We're, it's different, you know. People don't really do that here, at least. Yeah, you right. Know? Not that's for great. LA. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, you know, we're I'm trying to really change it up a little bit and bring MMA to Staten Island. You know, I would like to make it a little bit of a bigger deal around here. You know, it's becoming I'm mainstream. It's not. It is interesting that it's not, but he's right. As I'm listening to him, no, think about right. it. We no, we don't talk about it. No one no, talks about I, it. I mean, I I was never into that type of stuff. I mean, my dad. I mean, he wanted me to get into like karate when I was younger, yeah. that was, but that was just for to get into shape. You know, baseball is a huge, huge deal in my house. And and you would think though, on the island of who the hell do you think you are? Everybody's like, oh, oh. you would think that like everybody would be an MMA fighter, right? Like, no, nah, I mean, we, we've only had right. Why well, everybody's, everybody's a wannabe, uh, right? I mean, because we we've had a couple to come out of here. I mean, <clears throat> Rico Rodriguez, years, years back, like decades back. Nick Pace, who um, I train with a bit, him and his brother at Tiger Showman in, in Tottenville. Um, he fought in the UFC. He fought a couple big names. Oh, know. wait. Hold, what, what is it? Nick Pace? Nick Pace. That's my son's sensei. Yeah. Yeah, he's fantastic, that kid. Yeah. He, he just has, had a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great so guy. Nick's, Nick's the man. Nick's and his brother, Joshu. Ricky. Ricky, yeah. Joshu, well, Ricky, I yeah. Know, I don't know his real name. Is. Yeah, call, my son a, calls him Joshu. There's a ton of different names. Yeah. There's, it's, listen, it's a respect sport. And, and now this guy is this big. You go in there and it's but, discipline. And the guy who's that big. Would, I'm saying, but he's not a big guy, the sensei. We'll pull three of us. Kill you. I Crazy. Really nice guy. It's humbling. It's it's awesome. But that's why, like, when you cover it and you're around it, you want to be able to. I didn't speak realize. It. So now, I, when I go to for tomorrow, actually, yeah, Friday, I take him to karate. So when I go, I'll ask him tomorrow. Yeah, you drop my name. He'll he'll know who I am. I'll tell him you were an MMA fighter. Very yeah. interesting. Very cool. Yeah, no, so he hey. didn't answer my question before. Oh, sorry, I was talking too Let's much. Let's hear it. If you wanted people to go and watch one of your interviews, yeah, what was the one that like you blacked out? You had the best. You walked away feeling like, man, that was great. Which that's one would you want to watch? That's a good question. Doing a good job. Wow. Um, I got to think. It's tough. Uh, I mean, the best, the, the realest interview, I'd say, um, this fighter at Cage Titans in, in Massachusetts, this guy Joe Gianetti, he has fought on uh, in the UFC a couple times, in the contender, contender Series, stuff like that, or the Ultimate Fighter, I believe. Didn't get a contract, but he's a big big name in Massachusetts, like a big, big-time deal out there. He trains with guys like Habib in, in California. Um, I interviewed him, and he kind of really got into mental health and how – you know, he had a, a ton of anxiety and, you know, the sport saved him and stuff like that. Wow. And he kind of gave an answer I really haven't received from anybody. And right. he hasn't given anybody. And it was one of those, like, breakthrough moments where I was like, all right, that was, I felt real. You got something. You know, so yeah. I, I got something out of that. And that was probably my, okay, like, that. you know, this is, you, you can actually have an impact with this. And, you know, put it on Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff and got a bunch of views. And That's you know, great. People, people were commenting, supporting, you know, it's. It just, you know, let, mental health's a real thing and you got to, you know, sometimes reach out to your, you know, friends or your family and just make sure everything's good. And even if you sound soft, you know, you, you got to just yeah. make sure everything's fine, you know. But if you, you could have know. an impact on people, now that I realize that I have a big following, you could actually influence and impact, you know, people. And you can't be stupid and post things online that, you know, you wouldn't do yourself. Yep. So it's it's a little bit of a wake-up call, like I said before, you know. You lose a platform once; it could happen twice. It could happen. Yeah. It could happen as many times as possible. So, you could be here, and it could be down there tomorrow. Because when I lost the account, I thought it was over. I was done with social media. I was just going to stick with the nine to five social media, and just I had my job. You know, this is all just a plus. And right. It's like when the Jets lost it, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Back to yeah. it. But, so no, but thank you, man. This is really that was interesting, and it's like it's interesting to hear. It's not just like the the hype men and talking about the sport or whatever. The, the, like. To get it, to break in on a personal level like that, and like you said, to impact and help people, it's important, especially when you have a voice. Yeah. I mean, why don't you think? We'll end with this question because I got to jump in. Why don't you think? Because we all agree that MMA is not a big deal on the island, not I, as big as it should be. Why? What do you think it is? What What's holding it back? Do you think? I just think people are soft, and it's going to come off arrogant. I just think the same reason why you're seeing flag football for the kids be more more of a thing. When I was a kid, we didn't play flag football. And I'm not. I'm not saying this in a negative way. To no, I agree. We didn't play flight football. Mike, either. if you're listening to this, Mike Senior, I apologize. I'm not saying this in a negative way, but when we were kids, we played tackle football. Right. 
Now it's, oh, you get hurt, you get hit in the head, it's just that you can't play. Now it's we're babying the kids as they're growing up. Maybe you're right. So on top of, if they don't want kids playing tackle football, why would they want them going to boxing and, and kickboxing and doing jujitsu and right. stuff where you can get smacked around and stuff like that? I mean, I, I played baseball my whole life growing up. My dad, you know, Richmond County, you know, across the street from, from uh, Staten Island Boys. Right. You know, he, he has that and he, uh, he coaches at, at C as well. You know, baseball was everything. And that wasn't even a thought. But like I said, karate he wanted me to do. Yeah. Because it's a lot of training. You know, yeah. you're not getting punched in the face and stuff like that. It's yeah. really discipline. So I, I think personally, you know, being around a guy like that who's around baseball 24-7, it's, they don't want kids getting Are hurt there like MMA that. gyms on Staten Island? That's how There's MMA gyms. I feel like I've heard the of The best them. one is Tiger Showman's. Tiger Showman's MMA on, uh, in Tottenville. That's by that's far. That's Charleston. Ricky. That's the one I go to. Yeah. So that's actually an MMA gym. I didn't yes. even know that. It, so they don't have really pro fighters out of there. The home base in Jersey, they have pro fighters out of there. So this guy Shane Burgos, who I talk a lot with and uh, do a lot of media with, okay, he fights out of there. They have a couple more guys, like Julio Ars, a couple more guys. They have like a home base, it's called, like a headquarters. Right. So I don't know what I'm thinking that you would expect to it's walk like into. It's like a chain, like a franchise. No, but what, yeah, but what I'm saying is I guess I'm thinking of something different. Like, well, I remember, you remember Johnny Latz? Like, so, I yeah. used to be a gym rat. And you, one, I expected, when I, when, when I hear MMA, I'm thinking like, you used to think of the chains. Like so, a boxing gym. Yeah, He's right. thinking, because the one in Charleston, there's no cage. Right. So, when you go into an MMA gym, you'd expect to see a cage inside. Right, or something. You go into their headquarters, you see about four. That's when they got it? You okay. see about so four. So, it's just geography. That's what's so, confusing me. Yeah. So they, they have like one home meeting spot for where if you're, a, you know, top of the top guy. You know, a lot of these guys, they teach. It's like so, the first rule of fight clubs. You don't talk about fight club, right? Well, you, a lot of the, it's not a big money sport. Until you're at the top, then right. it's prize fighting. When you're coming through the ranks, you're not really getting paid besides sponsorship and stuff like that. So you have to teach and you have to be an instructor. And guys like Nick Pace, he's still teaching. Yeah, and I'm he loves you. it. He's great yeah. at it, you know. And he's fantastic. And he was one of the greatest. He was one of the best fighters in the world when he was on top and of his game. He's definitely someone I wouldn't think could like kill me instantly. It's, I mean, I know he'd mess me up, but he's so soft spoken. You got to see him with the kids. He's, I mean, it's crazy. He's fantastic. That's, I try to tell my dad to send the the kids at Richmond County to him, all the baseball kids, and just. It's great to get you in shape, and you discipline. don't get hit. My as a son's kid. three and a half. I mean, the amount of discipline that he's gotten. I mean, your guys it's the best, right? Your guys doing it's very well. He's a black belt now, right? He is. He's so, in taekwondo. In taekwondo. So I'm saying, but in other words, so just really focusing on on that discipline. Yeah, right? yeah, it's a discipline filled sport. I mean, and That's if you're right. not used to it, you don't understand it. Like my dad hates that I. You know, train MMA and, and train boxing. <laughs> well, because you're supposed to be follow the baseball path, right? He, not even that. Oh. It's just he hates it that like. Like, I joke around with him. I'll be like, oh, you know, I'm going to take one of these fights or whatever. And he's like, no, you're not. Like, yeah. You're going to get thrown out of the house. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, like, you can't stop me. Like, right. It's like a joke. But, like, he doesn't – it's just not his forte. It's not I, – I agree with why parents wouldn't like it for their kids. But I also think it's soft. Like I said, I everybody has their preferences. I, I probably wouldn't want to get punched in the face as so a So what could we what could we do collaboratively to try and – Erase the stigma and raise the bar and branding and awareness of, of MMA. Because, like, I, you I just was, telling me that my son, Sensei, was one of the best MMA fighters in the world was, like, altering my whole vision on everything that, you, so that we're talking about. The Mount Rushmore, to see a guy like that and then I get, I'm going to go home and Google him and look up, like, his fights and stuff because now I'm curious. So the Mount Rushmore of fighters is the big question I ask. Anytime I interview a fighter, I'll ask them, who's your Mount Rushmore, who's your top four ever? The common answer is Demetrius Johnson is on that list. Okay. Mighty Mouse. He fought Nick Pace. Wow. And they went to a decision. So they didn't... Wow. And, like, he had some some control time on the ground and stuff like that. He didn't get knocked out or anything like that. Like, they went... You know, he didn't win the fight, but he was in there and, and held his own with, you know, a guy who many think is one of the gr four greatest to ever walk the earth. So you see Nick Pace. That's you, cool. You respect Nick Pace. He's he's one of the best. And I I'll, I have nothing but great things to say about Nick Pace and, and Ricky Pace and, and the guys over at Tiger Showman. We got to get the advance behind the campaign. If I, if, if I was sending my kids somewhere, if I was going to work out, I'd send them there. Or if, if they were going straight boxing, I'd send them to Staten Island Boxing Academy. Those are those are the spots to go. Frank Giraldi, those are the spots to go. It's, it's there's, there is, there's a lot, right? There's a lot to offer there. And I think it is, it's incredible to watch kids. I think yeah. starting out young like that. So my, my son is in Dragon Kim's. Mm -hmm. He started when he was three. Yep. Went through the pandemic, did everything. He got his first degree after four years of training. He's watching his, his sensei's son right. become a sixth degree. He's been training for 27 years. It's crazy. He's got his own location on Manor Road and everything right. like yep. that. But it's like, think about that. I'm watching, you're watching. Yeah. Our kids start a 27, 30 lifelong year journey. Yeah. 
and it can only make them better, right? Like oh, yeah. the discipline of the sport, the consistency, being able to be focused, it helps everything. It helps his school. It helps him. Like he has things to look forward to. He has a core group of friends there. Yeah. He loves it. Yeah, I mean, like I agree with that 100%. Unfortunately, the one thing I will notice is there are a couple gyms on Staten Island that aren't. I'm not gonna name names. I'm not gonna throw people on the bus. I didn't. I didn't come on to here to. I didn't come on here to you know. You know, cause a rift. But um, there's some gyms where you go and you get worse, and you really. Oh, it's, it's like not everything else, good. right? It's Body right. beware. Right. But with something like fighting, if you're not learn, it's you know a big thing in in fighting is you know hand eye and you know a lot of muscle memory. Right. So you learn these things for time and time and time again, eventually you're going to be stuck in your ways and it's you not good. Learn it, right? Some of these people are teaching kids and it's, it's not good. It's, and I'm sure they'll know who, you know, who, who they are. If I see this, a lot of churn. I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily see, care. That's the other thing too that I see is a lot of churn. It's a lot of <clears throat> people that jump in and they're gone. Yeah. yeah. They just want money. That's really what it comes down to is, you know, it's, you could charge whatever you want to train somebody. There's no, because no one knows the fair market value. It's, right. Like I said, it's not a mainstream sport. None of these combat sports are mainstream. So it's not, like you have a hitting instructor for baseball or you have a shooting instructor for basketball. It's you have a specific guy who is supposed to have a specific dominance in a specific sport that is one of like five arts. Right. You know, usually predominantly yeah. usually it's you know, you have five tools for baseball, you go to a certain pitching coach or a hitting coach. There's five tools from mixed martial arts and it's a it's a lot of money you make, you know, being a teacher and instructor and stuff like that. So you could spend it the wrong way. It's very easy to. You know, that's it's very easy to. Rebranding MMA, bring it home. Well, I mean, I, I think MMA and, and boxing had to be rebranded in, in Staten Island. I mean, we were talking with, you know, Brandon, you know, producer, you know, he, he wants to bring back boxing to Staten Island. I couldn't agree anymore. I'd love to. Good friend of ours, Sal Toner, owns FC Chaos Boxing. Oh, Sal's I love the man. Yeah, Sal's so. fantastic. He's Sal's doing the man. amazing stuff. I mean, he put me through my paces twice. I haven't gone back, but he beat the crap out of me. It was the best thing I ever did in my Sal, life, honestly. Sal is really good at, at the fitness aspect of it as Sal's well. Sal's phenomenal. He, he He's going to be on here. In the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. He's, a, he's, uh, from what I could see, he's, he's a pain in the ass with the fitness. He's he'll, dedicated. Yeah. Though. He's good make, though. He's, I make you feel bad. I've interviewed Sal. Sal's the man. I, I had nothing. Good and he's young. Things. He's fantastic. Yeah. But he's, yeah. he's a lot younger than I even realized when we first became friends. I have nothing but good things to say about Sal and the guys over there. You know, he's got a guy, Phil Russo, over there who I love. You know, a good friend. And his facility is great. I mean, top in my notch. opinion, top notch. I'm not a, <clears throat> I'm not a boxing gym aficionado by any, any the means. The one off Arthur Kill. No, yeah. yeah. top notch. The one off Arthur Kill. I mean, it's clean. It's, for a quote Perfect. unquote small place, he's right. got a he's got a ring. He's got yeah, he's got levels. everything in there. Yeah. He's got he's got a good all the spot. all the equipment. He's got trainers. His trainers are phenomenal. But on top of that, he's got the st stuff outside. You can run up the hill and stuff like that. Yeah, you I stay off that, that stuff. You when he starts beating up people outside, I leave. It's part of the carry the log, the spin the tire, bring it back to mental health. Like he has the program for the first responders where yeah. they're open twenty four hours. They could go yeah. in there. They yes. can blow steam at four in the morning or whatever. You it have is. a key code. You go in. Yeah. Yeah. No. Sal's good people. Sal's. I mean, I've. Only had a couple encounters with him. Every time I've spoken to him since, he's another class, nothing but respect. Yeah, he's a phenomenal guy. I think he's, you know, he's the man. You know, he's good people. I didn't really, like I said, I didn't grow up around combat sports or anything like that. So when I meet new people, you really start to see who who's a BS artist and who's been around the game for, right. for a minute. Like I know Sal's been around before FC Chaos was a thing. He was training elsewhere. Oh he yeah, was doing stuff like that. Where a lot of guys were removed from places and then starting yeah. new thing. It's a little bit different. You know, he's he's good though. I like Sal. I got nothing but good things to say about Sal. So before we before we wrap up, give us <coughs> give us all your handles. Where can people check you out? And any uh, last any last comments that you have to say? Appreciate the time. I appreciate you guys. You know, it was great on. having you on. I appreciate you guys yeah. letting me come on here. You know, feel good about myself for for an hour. You know? This is great. I, I've never done an interview like this. I've never taken an interview like this. I'm very particular in, in how I, I do stuff like that. It was our cartoon that got you, right? It was the cartoon so, logo that made you think and yeah. trust us. Makes me look charming. So um, <laughs> I'm really big into, I'll close on, I'm really big into New York or Nowhere. Um, that's kind of, it's in my bio. It's, I didn't create the slogan, but I run with it. You know, New York or Nowhere. I'm happy to be where I'm from. And, you know, I'd like to make sure that combat sports and, like I said, men's flag football come back to Staten Island with a vengeance and just really, you know, sp spread it in the media aspect as much as I can. And, Make sure that combat sports are taken in differently in Staten Island. And it's not just a vicious sport where people get knocked out. It's a sport where you can learn discipline and learn arts and learn how to defend yourself and put yourself into better position as a, as a man or a woman. You know, I come from a big sports family. Like I said, my dad, George Quinn, you know, four-time champion at St. Joseph by the Sea in, in, in baseball. Four in a row, I might say, go. and it's still going right now. Shout out to St. Joe's doing You're good watching this. But, yeah, so, I mean, I come from a, a sports family, and, 
you know, discipline is everything. And I've, I've got it in the baseball aspect between that and, and Richmond County for years to where it's expected when I walk into an MMA gym, I just, I understand it. I was molded the right way. So I, I get it. I mean, that's how all sports should be, but you really understand it with martial arts. Yeah. Discipline is everything. You know, like you said, the names, that's everything. You know, to, you know, all out of there, you know, it's Nick, it's Ricky. When you're in there, you know, they, they have their own names. And yep. they, that's very important. That's the first step of discipline. If you can't follow that, you can't can't follow anything. You know, it's it's harder to get your white belt than it is to get your black belt because the white belt means that you had to be in there and you had to stay the course and you had to work at it. You had to go. Showing up is harder than being there. Ah, Once you go, like you're that. there. Yeah. You know, the black belt is the, the peak. Black belt's a white belt that never gave up. Yeah. <laughs> It's a thing. I it's like all, that. It's all. It's a Look lot of it mental That's stuff. That's a thing. Look it up. You know, it's a lot of mental stuff. They, yeah. they feed you a lot of stuff, and it sticks with you. So, you know. Well, listen. Thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. Charlie Quinn, Charlie Quinn MMA, Charlie Quinn Media. Yeah. Take a look. I'm your host, Dan Ryan. We're signing off, and that's Anthony Rapp. And this is Mike Bloomy, and that's a wrap. Don't forget to like, follow, share, and subscribe to all of our platforms, and don't forget to follow our boy Charlie over here at Charlie Quinn Media. Appreciate it. That's a wrap. Thank you. Thank you. Three companies disrupting what you know about marketing and branding. Welcome to M Squared. <laughs>